Okay, welcome everyone. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. We are recording by the town on Zoom as well. And if you could please rise for this the meeting is being recorded for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we are set to begin with the first order of business, which is the fall annual town meeting. Mr. Gilberto, we had this scheduled, right? <laughs> For, uh, we yes, already had the state chosen. We, we chose the date at a hearing uh, in the early part of the year, that's correct, Madam Chair. Yes. And then we also have on to review the Review submitted articles. Vote. Well, I don't know if we're going to be able to vote. We were joined by Mr. O'Leary in executive session, but he wasn't anticipating being even being here this evening. So, I think we should reserve a vote until he's back, and the five of us can can take care of that together. But Madam Chair, that's up to you. So the, the advantage to taking any votes that we might be comfortable taking this evening is that they can be printed in the version of the warrant that we mailed to each uh, resident so we right. can provide that version to the printer tomorrow. Um, I did mock up a draft of the motions that uh, included uh, recommendations for votes. Yes. Um, we do not have dollar amounts for um, any of the articles at this point in time, so there really isn't much to discuss, but the principle of many of the articles is something that is historically recommended. Pretty so routine. I, I encourage you to consider voting to recommend where you're comfortable Okay. Well, Article One is pretty routine. Correct. So, shall we? Shall we? Do you do you want to talk about the meeting schedule first, or do you want to talk about the articles? Um, the, the town meeting. Yes. I, I will just state that the town meeting is scheduled to take place on Monday, October third, at seven p.m. Um, at North Ready Middle High School. Um, it, will be the, it will be held in the uh, in the gymnasium, as has been the case. We're confirming that with the, uh, the public schools. Um, mm -hmm. We have fourteen articles on the uh, the warrant here. Um, there was a version of this that was in the packet. Uh, it was pending review with town council. There have been no changes that have been made to it, so it's the same version that we saw uh, earlier. And, and I can go article by article, and as I present, if you want to have a vote, you can do that. Let me just ask you a quick question in terms of this. We're reviewing it right now, but this is in our informal public hearing before right. the public hearing. We're still going to do that so that people can comment. <coughs> can come and comment on individual articles. That's correct. The hearing will be at the next meeting on September 20th. Right. And people can join by Zoom like they have been doing. So I think we're getting a lot of people joining us for those for those kind of informal meeting before the meeting. So all right. Go ahead, Mr. Gilberto. Um do you Madam Chair, if you're okay with it, we could go right to the motions for the recommendations. It really isn't much Sure. But just for people that are here, the article one is a pretty standard article that when people from the um, different departments want to give a report, usually Mrs. Hurlbut gives a report, right, from the finance I committee. And do that in June, well, you you'd be able to if you had something to report in October. Oh, so we just let the <laughs> let them give their report. It's pretty routine. We generally never say no to this one. So do we have a motion on that yeah, one? Madam Chair, I move to recommend, hear, and act on reports of town officers and committees. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we, we're going to vote to recommend Article 1. Prior year bills is it's pretty standard. We, we typically wait until recommend at town meeting, and right. that, that way we know what the specific bills are. Um, right. It's a requirement to, to vote those this way because we've already closed out the prior year. So right. we need a special vote of the town meeting to be able to pay those. So it would be motion to recommend at, at town meeting. Right. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting prior year bills. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's Unionist. Article, Article 3. Article 3 would be to appropriate money to the town's general stabilization fund. While we are awaiting the certification of available free cash, uh, my recommendation is that we make a recommendation at town meeting. Sorry. All right. And stabilization fund is what we all also known as our, our rainy day fund. Sure. 
Um, so do we have a motion? Yeah, Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting to appropriate money to the stabilization fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Mr. Gilberto, we typically do give money once a year to the stabilization fund. We try correct? to, yes, Madam Chair. Okay. When is the last time, do you know, that we put we money into transfer in June? Last June, year. okay. All right. It feels like a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> or just yesterday. <laughs> All right. Article 4. Um, Madam Chair, through you, Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund, this is the fund that we use to either offset debt service or make um, some um, capital purchases directly from, I'm anticipating that there will be a transfer in in accordance with our financing plan, so I am asking the board to consider you vote to recommend the article. This we do do generally every year. Yes. Do you have a set amount yet? Um, I don't have it off the top of my head. It's typically around $300,000. I believe it increases in um, this card this year. But we'll, we'll have a, an actual recommendation once we catch a certified. All right. Do we have a motion? Sure. Madam Chair, I move to recommend, recomm um, excuse me, I move to recommend appropriate money to the Capital Improvement Stabil Stabilization Fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Article 5, uh, this is an article um, that allows for a housekeeping transfer of any funds that were not transferred out from the prior year's appropriation. Um, it's our stabilization fund for solid waste, which we use to try to stabilize the rate. We do not have a projection for a transfer at this point in time, but I do suggest that we leave it on the warrant and recommend that town meeting a transfer event. Oh, recommend a town meeting. A town meeting. Okay, that's different than what you had here. Oh, sorry about that, Mr. Walner. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, uh, Article 5, appropriate money to the solid waste stabilization fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Madam Chair, Article 6 is a transfer of funds as part of our participating funding arrangement. Um, we transfer the uh, balance of health insurance um, through the performance of the PFA from the prior fiscal year in the October after the end of the year into the stabilization fund. And so my recommendation is to be to recommend this article. We do not typically have that dollar amount to land as a town. Right. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 6 to appropriate money to the participating fund arrangement fund. Second. Motion by Mr. <coughs> Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Gilberto, are we going to have the usual presentation by our fund manager um, on the how where we're doing with the insurance? What I what we typically receive in the fall is a statement as to what the surplus was in the prior year. So I expect we'll have that for the town meeting. I'll present that to the select board as soon as it's available. And the proposal would be to take the town share of that dollar amount, which is seventy percent, mm -hmm. and transfer it to the fund. Mm -hmm. Article 7, the operating budget, um, it's, we, we don't have any specifics yet, but it's likely we will have some transfers to be considered at the articles, at, uh, under Article 7 at the October town meeting. Um, but at this time, my recommendation is to vote to recommend the town meeting. No. Madam Chair, I move to uh, recommend a town meeting, Article 7, amend fiscal year 2023 operating budget. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Article 8 would allow for the rescission of any prior authorization to borrow. We typically do this in tandem with our capital budget, or any changes to that capital budget, but at this time my recommendation is to vote to recommend at town meeting action on this because we don't know if there will be any specific rescissions or not. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting. Article 5, excuse me, Article 8, rescind authorization to borrow. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Article 9, a potential amendment to the FY23 capital budget. I do expect that there will be uh, recommendations for amendments to the capital budget approved at the June town meeting, potentially um, relative to projects approved at prior town meetings. We await a report of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, which I expect to have at the evening of the 
hearing, September 28th. But at this time, I would ask the board to vote to recommend a town meeting the article. Okay, Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 9, amend 2023 capital budget. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Article 10, appropriating money for secondary school building litigation. Um, we continue to monitor the performance um, of the uh, appropriation, prior appropriations relative to this. My recommendation is that we vote to recommend a town meeting. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 10, appropriate money for legal expenses, secondary school building litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Similarly for Article 11, for ongoing litigation relative to 20 Elm Street, um, the votes 40B at that location, my recommendation is we vote to recommend a town meeting. Recommend. Okay, that's different than what was here. Um, Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting Article 11, appropriate money for legal expenses, 20 Home Street litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Madam Chair, through Article 12, appropriating money for the facilities master plan. This is made at the um, recommendation of the facilities master plan committee. Um, requesting funding um, for um, the completion of the master plan that was begun, um, was funded in October 2017, but begun in earnest um, roughly a year ago. Um, Madam Chair, through you, as I move to Ms. Robert, if you can remind me of the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. Did you have an, any uh, dollar amount, Mrs. Yeah, Robert? Uh, $20,000 funding source free cash. So, <laughs> so our motion would be to recommend. recommend, and in the sum we would be able to. That is a specific sum. Is so twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Yeah. So I'll just add that in. You just say recommend. Yes. I mean, do I add the twenty thousand no, to the motion? No, you don't. Okay. <coughs> so, Madam Chair, I move to recommend uh, Article Twelve, appropriate money for facilities master plan. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Mrs. Hilton. Madam Chair, through you, Article 13, appropriating funding for fire station schematic design. This is a project that was presented to the board at the August 8th um, regular meeting here in this room, and the facilities master plan committee is recommending a vote um, to um, request $300,000 for schematic design for the fire station. We believe the funding source would be for cash, although as we go through that process for certification, we'll determine for, uh, that for certain and have a recommendation on the 28th. Okay. Where the facilities master plan voted to approve? Yes. Yes. Motion. Madam Chair, okay. I'm, I'm noticing that two of the articles are tagged as sponsored by the select board, but they're actually submitted by the facilities master plan committee. So if we, can address, if we can address that when we get to the signature moment, but it should adequately reflect, it should adequately reflect that, I think. Sure, okay. So that, we're on to Article 13. It does say sponsored by the select board. And the, um, the, the facilities master planning committee's been up and running now since COVID passed and gotten this to be put on as a top priority the highest priority on the list of many, many priorities, but this is the top priority to get that uh, fire station up to up to par. I don't want to say up to code, because it is in code, but it, it needs, it needs it's, it's in much, much in need of improvement. Um, the the um, Article 13, do we have a, a motion? Yep. To Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 13, appropriate money for fire station schematic design. All right. No, we, we second, don't usually do that. Okay. Second. But we, we do want to know what, what it is that we're saying yes to. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Yep. Gonzalez. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Madam Chair, through you, Article 14. 
appropriation of funding for surveying wetland delineation on town on land located within the affordable housing zoning overlay district uh, at 57 Abel Street, 44 to 46 Oakdale Road, and 7 St. Teresa Street. This was an article that the board had brought up and uh, subsequently brought to the Planning Commission. I believe Mrs. Gonzalez spoke to the Planning Commission. I don't know if you want to comment on their position throughout that. Yeah, so I attended the um, Planning Commission meeting and told them our wishes to have them um, come on board with this article with us and they were happy to do it. Okay. And this this goes back to a few town meetings ago when we were trying to vote on the of three affordable housing parcels that have been I guess designated at least one of which was in wetlands or a lot of people from the town were explaining, you know, how, to, how can you possibly develop there when you're not even sure what the, what the land, you know, topography is, and though they were neighbors and they were familiar with it. So there were three specific parcels at that time that we basically passed over to get more information. And one of the things that we thought is if it's our land and we're divesting of our land, that we should really know what portions of it are buildable, what portions of it are wetlands, beyond just what we have on our, our GIS or our maps and really have an actual survey so that the town knows when it takes a vote on, on these articles specifically what, what we're divesting and where building can take place on these, on these lots. So that was the <coughs> really just the kind of the purpose of putting it back on here is to get the money designated to get these surveys done on these three particular parcels. And just to add, it, at that time, it looked like we were not in we were not in unison, but it wasn't for the reasons that people thought we are all on board for affordable housing. We just wanted to know what we have done, mm -hmm. right. and it's why we went against it at the time. So and now we're going to go in unison with this. And I think in the in the in the parcel on Haverhill Street, there were quite a few residents that were voting members at the meeting that raised concerns about yeah. the safety safety aspect of that very busy street and putting another development right there what type of development right. would be being put there for affordable housing so they were pretty concerned about that mm -hmm. so i think that was compelling in terms of what we heard from people there as well so now we're going to just do this hand in hand with the with the cpc so can i ask a question uh, is it going to be i mean is this is this wide enough to cover everything? It's more than just wetlands, right? The way you're describing it, I'm not sure. Is that right when I say My that? My understanding was that article was to address wetland delineation and possibly survey associated. So that would take care of what Mr. O'Leary was asking about? <clears throat> I, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what he was asking about. So. All right. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend. Article 14, appropriate money for wetland delineation or town-owned land located within affordable housing zoning overlay district, 57 Haverhill Street, 44 to 46 Oakdale Road, and 7 St. Teresa Street. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Madam Chair, figuratively, we have a vote for uh, signing the Okay, Madam Chair, I move to sign the October 3rd, 2022 town meeting warrant. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Do we have corrections to make? We do. Yeah. Articles 12 and 13 to change sponsor and select board to facilities master. With that amendment and the motion. With that amendment. Thank you. <laughs> Is that already in here? Did you already? It's not. I need to reprint it. Okay. You can sign it because I'll substitute the meeting. So we have not signed the way it is. Okay. okay. Mr. Gilberto, 12 and 13 Correct. was the amended motion. Yes. With the modification of the sponsor being the uh, facilities master planning committee. That's correct. So, okay. so moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? It seems like it's a lean warrant. Where's the rest of the articles? It's missing half of the articles. <laughs> should, we, should we try to put some more on here while we're here? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. All right, so that is 
So, Mr. Oh, okay, Jen's going to grab that for us to sign. Yeah, you, you can sign this copy and we'll substitute the pages that have that change. Okay. On. All right, so our next order of business Martin's Landing, Martin local. I'm sorry, but I see that we've lost the Zoom connection here. I thought it was Give it a minute? Yeah, sure. Try to, try I think I have it corrected. I, I don't know what happened to it. Lost the internet. All right. We have the next order of business on the agenda, which is a local initiative program application for local action units. And Mr. Gilberto, why don't you take that away? It looks okay. pertaining to Martin's Landing it and Pulte Homes application. Correct, and as uh, this board knows, we provided feedback to the Zoning Board of Appeals that we would like to see affordable units as part of their um, additional development on that site. That goes back, I think, almost two years at this point in time. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, included a condition uh, upon granting uh, the ability to construct 52 additional units um, on the uh, on, uh, floor of their buildings that uh, were at the time supposed to be constructed. Um, in addition, eight, eight units were to be designated affordable under the state's requirements for the subsidized housing inventory. In order for that to happen, uh, we need to uh, sponsor them becoming added to the inventory. And so uh, this is a, an agreement that we would be entering into um, that would get these units put onto the affordable housing inventory once constructed. Uh, they would have a perpetual affordability restriction that would only be um, eliminated uh, should a, 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 sell, a seller not be able to find a buyer, and that's standard language. Um, so this is fulfilling what we sought from the Board of Appeals a year and a half ago, which was additional units uh, by, by, by making them be designated as such. I may be doing the math wrong but we were really specific about the percentage of units coming on board being 15% affordable housing. So if I'm doing my math right, eight is not 15% of that number. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at 
where the discussion landed, but I know that the special permit that was granted called for eight units to be formed. So we were all, I believe, except for Vincenzo on the board at that time, and we, we really were specific because Pulte came to us as well to do the presentation on this. When they were adding a floor. That's correct. I was here for that. You were? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So how many units in total are they getting? No, it was eight. It comes yeah, to seven. It was eight. Okay, it was eight. It was 15. We were looking for 15% of the total number. What was the total uh, 52. number? 52. Or 52. Oh, so I'm re okay. So, f okay. It so says 502, percent. though. That's the grand total, yes. Right. But we of were all five floors? Of, of all nine buildings. Okay. This uh, is only relative to four buildings. Right. Good. Okay. All right. So it's a little, I read it wrong then. So we're talking about the added floor, 15% of those units. Correct. So the total number of 15% would be at least eight of those units. Eight out of 52. Units. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good. I read that wrong because I thought it said 502 in the agreement. So I was so oh, I read I need my glasses. <laughs> and I'm not but good at math, but even I can do that. In fact, you need to add another floor because it's All right. units. Missing. <laughs> Is there anything else to let the board know with regard to the application? It has to be signed. Is there a deadline or anything like that going forward with this? Because it looks like they're going to DHCDU with regard to, I guess, identifying that number on our behalf as affordable. And I, I don't love the presentation of the very marked up application, but that is a requirement that was put upon us by DHCD, so that's why you see a marked up version. Uh, but I would encourage the board to sign them. This is what, this is, we'll, I know we'd hope for a higher number, but in the end, what we get landed at was the eight units, okay. um, and that's what was granted in the special permit. This step will take us in, a, this would be another step in the direction of getting those on the Right, and you just reminded me, it was, it was for the floor of units. We did get 15%. Of the yeah. new units on the right. right, okay. Four floors, one on each floor. Yes, each yes, that's right, yes. Okay, so do we, is there any, do we have any questions about that? Just the markup, who did the markup? Uh, it's town council, actually. Town, town council. council. Okay. And so we feel good about that, because yes. there was a lot to go through there. Um, okay, that's it, thank you. Total number of 502. Eight will be okay. <laughs> oh, the, the whole thing. All right. Okay. Do we have any motion? Yep, Madam Chair, I move to approve and authorize the chair to sign the Martin's Landing Revised Local Action Units application. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner. Second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. They have to change the spelling of my name because that's wrong too. Unless that's a, an edit they wanted to see as well. Do you want this back? Uh, sure. Madam Chair, sure is the warrant going around because the big constable's here this evening? I have it right here. I guess. Thank you. Hold on a second. I signed the wrong name to it. I don't know why I got it. Two copies. Yes, this is the other copy. All right. Are we okay to move on? Next order of business is the show cause hearing. Smokes and stacks, vote to amend. So I think our hope is that this is not a relevant vote and that by the time the hearing date actually comes, the ABCC will have signed off on the transfer that was approved by the board on August 8th. But in the event that is not the case, we had set the hearing the evening of July 11th prior to setting the meeting schedule. So we set the hearing for Monday, September 26th, but then subsequently changed the date of the meeting from the 26th to the 28th. So I'm recommending, just to keep everything in order on this issue, that we vote to amend the continued hearing date from September 26th to September 28th. And I notified the license, the licensee at the time in July that that was an issue that was going to need to be addressed, so they are well aware. But again, I think our hope is that within the next two weeks we hear from the ABC that they have signed off on the transfer and the disciplinary hearing becomes a, a moot point. Okay, great. So do we have a motion okay. to yeah, amend? Madam Chair, I move to amend the continued show cause hearing for Slopes and Snacks Incorporated doing business as Route 28, 
let be marked from Monday, September 26th to Wednesday, September 28th. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Next order of business is to select the date for the waste wastewater workshop because we we re we had to reschedule that for some unknown reason we were picking a Friday evening which is really just torturing ourselves yeah. here with, it was all, the the only one available with all the meetings we already go to all right um, so you know, did Siebel there give us some of his time so um, I don't believe so hmm. Should we hold off then and just, I mean, because you, you, you are allowed to circulate an email to schedule on that for us without sure. being. Can we, can we just try to, amongst the four of us, pick two dates oh, maybe? Sure. And then we can suggest that to see. Sure, Mr. Walner, that's a good idea. Good idea. What, what do you, what do you. Um, How about daytime? Is it day, night? What? It can really be at any point in time, but I can tell you that for, for the professional staff would love <laughs> love a daytime meeting, but we understand that the needs to be in the evening. We wake up at 4 a.m. in my house, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not in mine. <laughs> and they've done that. We're going to try daytime. So, so the DPW director put no. out there yeah. Wednesday, September 14th as a, a starting point for discussion. So I'm going to put that out there. And what time? We'll I won't. I'm not available. Yeah, so. Wednesday's a bad thing. Okay. I'm also this. not available. This was a reminder that Wednesday's a bad thing. We have a meeting on <laughs> the 28th. We're available for that, though, right? We do have a meeting scheduled. <laughs> yeah, we do have another Wednesday. Right. Schedule. We put a Wednesday night again because we're. I don't remember why we didn't have the 26th, but. It's a, it's it's a holiday. holiday. Oh, yes, that's right. About Tuesday the 20th. Not, not available the, the next couple of weeks. Oh, when are you available? I guess we should suck it there. <laughs> I think we might be going into October. I don't think we can do that. I think we want to we be can. mindful of a special time. Right. Right. Town yes, meeting is on the 3rd, so, so we already have a meeting scheduled that. Last week of September. That's your late. Rosh Hashanah is Monday. Sure, right? when, are, when are you back? A lot of no shaking going on. <laughs> About Tuesday, the 27th. That's good. Do you do Tuesday, the 27th? Even though we have the 28th? Oh, only if you guys want to meet at about 8.30 or 9. So at night? At oh, night. Late. That's what we do. Uh, I don't <laughs> <laughs> know. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And we have a meeting on the 28th already. Yeah. So. Um, so what Friday the 23rd? Do you think? I think we were asking for three hours. Three hours. Sorry. Right. Friday the 23rd. Is that your Kansas office day still? Three so hours. Three it's hours. Lot. Are you still doing an office day on Fridays? So, uh, Friday, yeah. no, I Friday the 23rd. Yeah. Um, in the afternoon, if you go, if you can be out of town. My hands on here. Sorry. Can we do? Hey, I would hate to do it on. Can we do a Saturday? Is that like the seventh? Mm -hmm. Would that be possible? You can try. I'll be out of town. I'm seventeenth to the twenty fourth. I'm, I'm up. I would be on the first. Do you want? I know this may not be the most efficient, but you want to split it and do two? No. No? <laughs> no. I'm just trying to see. Realistically speaking, we can't, we, even get one. <laughs> we can't get through a meeting in, there's no way we're going to get through a, a three-hour meeting in two two meetings of one and a half no, hours. No, 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 that's not what I meant. Yeah. I meant that if certain board members can make one day, the person, that, like, we just, yeah, it's the same thing. Why are we, so I'm not following, why are we not, what, what's the issue? What are we trying to, why are we trying to cram it in right now? I think we're trying to leave ample opportunity for public outreach over the course of October, November. Yeah. What time? Before the November so time. this one has to be done first. So, but why can't we pick a day in October and then the public out, there, there could be multiple public outreach meetings. 
And if we're meeting anyway, the public can be sitting in on that meeting as well. We certainly can. It just will compress the outreach. Yeah. And I think that a number of us are hesitant to go to any other venue and present this without having come here first. I think we're going to have feedback. Some things might yeah. change after yeah. oh, yeah, three absolutely. hours. So what about next week? What's next week look like for everybody? No, I, no I'm i not no. available. I actually, and the days you're picking, I have pre-trials and trials, and I'm not going right. to schedule anything and around I'm those. I'm sorry, because we already week. plugged in a bunch of meetings during those. So sorry, we're down to the last week. Well, let me ask September. this. On that one day, the 28th? We have a meeting, yeah. I know, but can Come you, early? do you think you can... You don't have to meet with me. You can meet without me, and I'll catch up. I catch up pretty quickly. I can catch you up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, maybe and we'll I, do that. I will read through the materials, too. So. so if that's the case, Rich, do you have a day next week? Day next week. Um, I'm hesitant to not have her there. Um, hesitant to what? Not have her there. Um, I think it, I think we collectively do better meeting all together in something like this. I think it's going to be involved. I mean, I haven't seen it. You know better than I do, but I think it's involved. So, what about the last oh, week yeah, of September? Did we want to be. Let's put this way. There, Kate? Let's put it this way. I think we should be on the same page by the time the the meeting is done. How about the? What about the first week of October? Do does everybody have the seventh in the afternoon available? When did you say? October seventh. That's a Friday. Say weekend. Yeah, I'm gone that. I'm gone that weekend. I mean, we're not even sure if Steve's going to be there either. So, so that. So what about the thirtieth, Friday? I believe the DPW director is not available the 29th to thirtieth. Those are only two days he gave me. Sorry. Can we do it on a Sunday? Oh, good God Almighty! <laughs> <laughs> After church, <laughs> after church. <sighs> I mean, Sunday. But Sunday, I think, believe Sunday meetings are discouraged by the attorney general. And not, not that it's not possible. I think if you're going to do a weekend day, it would be a Saturday. Not that I'm recommending that either. <laughs> when you Sunday, run? Sunday meetings are highly discouraged by my husband too. So. The 17th to <laughs> 24th. I think we're going right. on the 17th to 24th. I think we won't be in October. Um, I'm going the 17th to the 24th. Right? 17th to the 24th. So we're on the 7th. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, October 5th. It's uh, Yom Kippur. <laughs> oh, is it? oh, it is. I see it in my calendar. E yeah. Evening. Evening meeting. On the 5th? In the evening. I'm suggesting, but I believe it's a holiday. Oh. What, the, what day? October 5th is a holiday? It's Yom Kippur. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about the 4th? Yom Kippur begins at Sunday. Oh, so that's Sunday right. Forget that's it right. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the 3rd, we have town meeting. So, so the 7th is out. The 6th? So could, oh, let's, let's think about that. Could we do town meeting from 4.30 to 7.30? Because it never usually gets started until 7.30. Could we do it there? Yeah. And I would anticipate the town meeting is going to be pretty short. There's nothing really highly controversial in that. So. No, because this thing we say, to, this thing could drag. Okay. Well, I mean, we'd have to limit it to three hours. So. Three hours is a long time for anybody's attention span anyways. I don't know that we should pack this in too before the town meeting yeah. because we, we do typically do have a meeting before the town meeting already. I think we're back to Friday the 7th. I know, but I think the 7th is out though. Somebody cannot yeah. make it on I'm the 7th. Gone. I'm gone. Oh, you are. Thursday the 6th? Yeah. Not a possibility. Thursday the 6th? And you wonder why our meetings go so long. <laughs> yeah, I could do We can't I even pick a date. Yeah, I could do this on Saturday. I can't. You can no. Yeah, neither can Leanne. That's a bad Can you do early morning? Can anybody do this the sixth early morning? The I mean, sixth. I can, I Daytime, can I can make any day work. I just need advance notice. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't mind being here at six in the morning. You, you don't mind being hours. here at six in the morning. I no. get up early. Anyways. 
But again, don't if 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 the sticking point is me not being there, you can you can meet without me and I will get caught up quickly. Yeah. What why don't we just do that and then we can get the presentation over to Kate. Like, you know, like yeah. What what are we saying? So I think we're back to September. If back we go to September. Okay. So the week of the 12th because I'd rather get in sooner rather than later if we can uh -huh. and is there any daytime availability you have at Leanne? Uh, I have flexibility some flexibility in the day. or afternoon I could probably do a Tuesday so, morning or a Friday morning so Friday the 16th I have wide open. What about you, Rich? Um, I have. I, I can move it around. I and can, I know that I can change that. We've had calls where I know Steve has been able to do Friday mornings. Yes, we have a financial planning team meeting now. What time? Oh, at at can we move it? No. <laughs> Why not? I'm not sure we're going to be able to find another date. Because <laughs> what time is the meeting supposed to be? Eight thirty. Actually, we hold two dates: the 16th and the 23rd. Great. So I guess we'll we do the 23rd. 23rd. Uh, no, no, 20. No, no, that's for financial planning that we can move oh, it to the 23rd. Out. Yeah. See? Yeah. So you want to do the 16th? I would feel a lot better if, because, well, Steve and I are both, but like, at least if like, if all we have to do after the 16th is like, me find a couple of hours, like, you know, to give her all the information, and then like, again, she can email directly whoever, at least. You know, we have that out there. Because mm -hmm. I do think that there's so, yeah, there's just so much information yeah. that I, I, I just think that. How much time are we allotting? Three hours. So. What time are you starting the meeting? On the 16th, you want to? I need to be in Lexington. At what time? One. One? Oh, we could do eight o'clock. Yeah, eight o'clock. I mean, we do seven, Michael. We can do four. I, I don't sleep. I, I can do eight o'clock. I can't be able to before eight. Okay. I can do that. Are you bringing lunch? Huh? Well, I'm All right. So eight to eleven on the sixteenth. That's a suggestion. All right. What? What? September sixteenth. If your case settles, you can just join us. <laughs> Not gonna happen. No. <laughs> September sixteenth. Yeah. I'm assuming yeah, Rich can. I mean, uh, Steve can do it. Yeah. Do you want me to text them? Yeah, or, my, or I mean, it doesn't matter. You have to bother him now. I don't know what he's doing, but yeah, sure. I mean, just set it there, I'll send and it then you. Yeah, yeah. See what he says. And then it really should you. We really should lock in some of these other days that you want to do the public outreach. I mean, the public can sit in on that meeting as well but if the if there are these public meetings are they intended to be with us or just public service meetings with the members of the public I think we'd like to have board members there thank you madam chair now that we have this date we can we can address a schedule at this meeting okay. and we'll have a draft for you based on this date okay okay so so we're not going to pick the public the public no. the public meetings yet but there'll be sometime in October? I, I expect in October and November multiple yeah. instances okay. of interaction, not just in the venue of a select board meeting, but in the right. as well. The library or mm -hmm. wherever you can All right. have a lot of people, okay. distance learning lab or whenever you can have a, wherever you can have a lot of people to know okay. about that. Okay, so is that it for that? Yes. That took us a half an yeah, hour. All right. Yeah, if you I'll let you know. Memorandum of agreement with North Reading Superior Office. <laughs> Association, do we have a motion? I think we already. No, the we're same, doing it public now. Oh, okay. okay, so Madam Chair, I move to ratify and sign the memorandum of agreement between the Town of North Reading and the North Reading Superior Officers Association for the term effective July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2025. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Next door, public comment. Is anybody here for public comment? Nope. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Is there anyone joining us? Um, any? But he's, nobody looks like they're joining us either. No so Except Maureen behind the bubble. Thank you for joining yeah. us. <laughs> We've grown to like an audience. I know. I know. All right, appointment of the process serving constable. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, we received an application earlier this summer from a candidate uh, for the fourth process serving constable. We have three that are currently filled right now. Mm -hmm. um, the individual was reviewed by the police department and a, um, um, a, a thorough background check was conducted. There were no issues that were identified, as you saw in the communication we provided. Um, they recommended that both a quarry and a driving record be uh, reviewed, and uh, that was conducted. And um, uh, we, I think, are comfortable with the candidate laying before you here um, to be considered for our appointment. And we have prepared a motion accordingly. And uh, Madam Chair, through you, I would defer to the liaison, Mrs. Gonzalez, if she has any further comments. Sure, Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, no, the, the town has done its due diligence, and there have been no issues, so we recommend it. All right, so do we have a motion? Yep, Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following name for appointment as process serving constable to expire December 31, 2022, Gabrielle Mangiello. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah. You say yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. And again, everything's in order, all the paperwork's in order, and this has been vetted by the police chief yep. and all set to go. Right, Mr. Gilberto? Yeah, the police department, not the chief himself. Okay. All right. So we have a motion. And this is just, is this a roll call? It is the name being stated. Gabriella Mangiello. Mangiello. So it's a, a name roll call vote. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. Walner. Gabrielle Mangiello. Mrs. Gonzalez. Gabrielle Mangiello. Mr. Studo. Gabrielle Mangiello. And Manupelli is Gabrielle Mangiello. All right, that's good. We have a new constable. Next order of business are the legal bills. Do we have a motion, Mr. Walner? Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for July 2022 in the amount of $2,187.55. As follows, general $1,782.55, labor $405 for a total of $2,187.55. Do we have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That is it for the legal bills. Just the one bill, right, Mr. Walner? Yep. So We're on to town administrator's report. Madam Chair, through you, I had about a dozen items to go through, but I will limit it to three that are time sensitive. You can go through all no, six. No, no, That's no, no, okay. No. That's what he said 12. Even this is <laughs> three. <laughs> See, I'm so, telling you, I'm not good with numbers. So. <laughs> uh, first is that uh, we have been notified that there will be road closures in the vicinity of Harold Marker State Forest associated with the motion picture that's going on. Um, the one, um, so the, the closures are Salem Street between Jenkins Road and Berry Pond Road. There'll be local resident access only. Again, it's not in North Reading. Um, Middleton Road between Berry Pond Road and Forest Riding Academy, full of closure. Salem Street between Forest Street, Marblehead Street and Forest Riding Academy, that's a portion in North Reading. That's local resident access only. Salem Street, Middleton Road between Forest Riding Academy and Berry Pond Road will be full closure, no access. And Harold Parker Road between Middleton Road and Route 114 will be full closure. Um, and I know that there's been notice that's been issued to the residents who are largely not in North Reading. Um, we did find out about this late, um, and it was referenced to communication between law enforcement, but it wasn't North Reading law enforcement, but they over or hand over. Um, so I just want to put that out there and make you aware that it will be going on um, just to our north over the town line. Um, tomorrow, Thir I said, keep saying Thursday. But just tomorrow. one day filming? That's one day uh, filming. In the overnight tomorrow night, that's correct. Okay. 
Um, second is that the um, health department continues to um, facilitate vaccination clinics conducted by a third party contractor um, who uh, administers uh, COVID-19 vaccines. I would just note that beginning with the next clinic on September 10th, they will have the so-called updated um, vaccine version of the vaccine available. So anyone who's looking for that can go to the health website and find out more information to register along with the appropriate disclaimers and information about the vaccine itself. Thirdly, um, I will just note this is a preliminary information, but we've been contacted by JRM, who are advising us that they are going to need to modify the collection schedule in the hopes of being able to um, more adequately finish the town in the schedule that they've set. They haven't proposed a specific schedule to us yet, but I just kind of want to give the board a heads up that that's coming over the course of the fall, and I hope to have more information from you, uh, for you um, at the uh, September 28th regular meeting. Mr. Gilberto, when yes. you when you say modify the collection schedule, they're not reducing the number of collections. No, they're looking to spread the collection out over multiple days. So um, designated geographic areas of the town for a specific day in the hopes that they have a better shot at finishing the town over the course of, uh, finishing the roof over the course of the day rather than cramming the whole town into one day, which has been proving problematic for more than a year at this point. What's, why, why is it? Um, so the most significant factor is the wait time at Covian to dispose of the uh, uh, time it gives in the truck. Right. They have to go to April, wait in line, sometimes wait multiple hours, and then come back to finish the room. Uh -huh. um, so that, that's one issue. The other issue is be, you know, they're looking to, amongst the communities that they serve, spread out communities over multiple days and not focus on any one community. It allows them to resolve issues more quickly, so if they miss something on one day, they're right back here in the community the next day. God forbid you know, that that actually happened. Um, and the hope is to minimize that moving forward. Um, and the third thing is, we, we know there's been a change, um, and the communication from JRM has not been great with regard to that change, but they have been bought out by a public service, which yes. is a nationwide company. Yeah. Um, they're making some adjustments, um, but are uh, committed to continue to provide the resources here. I will tell you, We've received indications from JRM well prior to the transaction with Republic that this was coming. They had indicated to us more than two years ago that they were seriously considering it. And, you know, we certainly don't want to see a change take place, but we do understand why it's happening, and the proof is sort of in the pudding and the fact that they are struggling to complete the proofs every Tuesday, in this case, with Wednesday. So, so that you think it might be going to two days a week or uh, different? We're, we're, Part of that will be uh, up for discussion in terms of what they propose um, and, and how they're looking to implement it. So um, more to come, but multiple days, yes. Okay. Right. A lot of people complain about the, the collection. So that's a well, some, that. somewhat of a big issue. Yeah. It's statewide, though. I mean, well, just, it's not just here. Mm -hmm. It's Covanta, and it's, ev it's every town, every city are sitting there waiting. It's, it's not just us. And the other, my other question to you is, we. We voted on those bags and the rollout of that aspect of collection to where we're going to that one or one receptacle. Two, two, two fifties. Plus the bags. Two, and the bags, and then we were talking about all the other implementing the other requirements mm -hmm. for the rest of the textiles and all the rest of that. What what happened with that? Because we. We really, we'd spent a long time on that, and, and then I know that it got delayed, but it's not something that should come as a surprise all of a sudden when it's implemented. So what, what's the status, and when are we going to at least be m giving more public service announcements on that? So I expect in the September 28th meeting we'll give a, an update with regard to that, but what has happened is uh, lack of supply in the bags, just unable to acquire the bags in a timely fashion to kick off that July 1st start, which is what we had targeted. So right now, you know, we're looking at something later in the fall for an implementation to give people the opportunity for some notice. Whether or not these two things coincide with each other or not, the schedule and the bags remains to be seen. We need to work that out with JRM and Republic. Um, but uh, that is something that is still very much on the radar. But you know, for those who don't know, the delay is due to the fact we could not acquire bags. Uh, to do that. We needed to pre-order the bags um, from, uh, from a manufacturer. The delays are multiple months. We had hoped to be able to start July 1st, but it was clear pretty shortly after uh, the board approved the program change that the date we had set was not going to work, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. 
So there will be more to come, most likely at the September 28th meeting. All right. I, and uh, I'm on the liaison now for that group, and okay. uh, because it's very clear, I mean, I look at my neighborhood, you know, people are putting out lots of bags, two barrels, and they're picking up everything. So I don't know if I'll, I think our meeting is the end of September for that group, but I'm going to ask, are, are we going to, are we not going to push the two barrel limit until we have the bags, or can we start educating no, people right, right now about that? Wait you have to wait the bags. Bags. Okay. But, but I don't think we should wait though to, to I think it should be even though we've talked about it here we don't usually have an audience I don't think we should wait I think we should let people know this is what's the it's changes yeah. Would not, yeah, but not make the change until we have the bags. well I mean but that's the same with the, all of the new requirements under the DEP so we have to let people know that because mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of different things that it's that a behavior change that's going to take time but we yeah. we have to really explain out what is a lot because I looked up uh, we usually have a hazardous materials mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and what's on the website I think is from 2020 or something like that so it's not even even our own website isn't updated with the current information and we should have we're expecting to implement these modifications to the to that because that's a big issue for people. It is. Yes. And people get confused even on a holiday. Is it going to? Is it today the day or are they? St so people are just generally, even though we have a steady day, that's confusing for people. So, I think we need to put that information out there now. Okay. So if I people agree. have questions or things, just not waiting until okay, it's being implemented next week. I think we need to explain that because even I've forgotten about all the changes that we made because it's been you know yeah. it might even months. be good to because we actually have I mean forget the change we actually have a rule of two barrels right that's the max we're supposed to be doing now and that's clearly not being observed I mean I watched them go by a construction site and they picked up 10 bags that were hanging out there by the construction you know so yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll bring it to their attention. Right. right, just to have some information now yeah. being put out there, I think okay. would be a help. And they even if it's it included in website, the yeah. recycling website, yeah. Yeah. the information. Yeah. I good. know it makes extra work, but even something in a mailing that goes out or, or a billing that goes out or, or absolutely has to be updated on the website, you know, for, for the current dates and things like it that. It could be so. in the transcript too. should mm -hmm. be in the transcript, right? Or, or, I mean, even on the website, yeah. the website has old information on it. So, um, you just on the household hazardous waste day, it is Saturday, October 15th from 9 a.m. to noon um, at the DPW facility on Chestnut Street. Um, I know that's on the special collection page, but we'll put that out separately as well on town yeah. so people see it. Yeah. All right, thank you. I, I didn't mean to interrupt it, but you brought that up, so I mm -hmm. wanted to, I, I definitely <laughs> wanted to ask you. It was on my things to check with you anyway, because of the composting issue and the uh, textiles issue. That's coming in. You can't throw clothes in your trash anymore, right? Not supposed to, yeah. That's, so. that, was a, that was the next phase <laughs> after right. the bags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my right, right. So. Right. You know. Yeah. There was a date for that though. November, I believe it was November. November, yeah. For the bags? No, for the textiles. Oh. Right. And that's come that's coming up. That's coming I mean, up that's pretty coming quick. Up. Yeah. All right. So we should have because we have these committees, we should really have some sort yeah. of public service yeah. somehow, some way to get that that yeah. information out there. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I think that a lot of people I've spoken to about the mattresses and textiles not being picked up as of November 1st, they all think it's our town and they don't seem to understand that it's a statewide regulation. Right. I think we really need to put that out there that it goes beyond this town and it's a whole state <coughs> issue. Absolutely. People just don't get State it. requirement. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. It's going to keep getting worse, so people need to understand. And I also think that people put out as many barrels as they want. They don't jam pack them. They just don't care. I see it all the time. Right. They could do a better job of really packing it down, I think. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Agreed. I just will add, we also put out a mailer in the utility bills, a water and trash bill, the last quarter that the bills were issued. So people should have gotten a flyer in their bill as well. Okay. We'll put it on the website so it's more, more visible and on the social media. Thank you. That's great. And it, was there anything else that you wanted that to? My Are you sure? Thank that you. was only three. I'm not going to go to the That's end. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So let's move on to board member reports and old new business. Mr. Walner. Yeah. So just on the Swan Pond Trail project, I finally finished the RFP draft. So I assume I give that to you. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Or do you want to vote from us first before? Yeah, um, why don't you send it to me and look at it before we Okay. Vote. All right. So that should be ready to go. Great. Um, that was a big project just to get that done. It's yeah. a lot of pages. So hopefully I did it right. That's the biggest thing. I'm set. Mr. Walner, when we talked about before when we talked about um, Martin's Pond and dredging or s those type of things, did, did we ever move forward with yeah, any of that? Yeah, I've asked them to do that. They're doing a survey of the pond right now. And by the way, the, the work we've done so far has really worked. The weeds have looked better oh, than ever. Good. So it's actually, you, you've asked that before, yeah. how is it? And they've told me it's been really good. And they're doing another formal survey now. Uh, to be honest, I'm getting some resistance about the dredging. But I'm reminding them that it's really, we're not trying to um, judge right now. We're just trying to find out what's the pros and cons of doing that. Okay. And so I, I continue to push them on that. They understand where I'm coming from. They, they have their own feelings about that. And, you know, there will be neighborhood resistance because it was controversial before. But it's really just a question, what's the pros and cons so we can decide if we want to move forward. But is someone able to, to answer that question? Because I know people are worried about dredging obviously upsets yep. a lot of the... We wouldn't be the first to have dredged a pond. So I think it's, yeah. it's just doing the homework and going to figure it out. And we do have a local resource at Merrimack right. who, who right. also could give an opinion. Right. Um, but it'd be like just finding out what's the pros and cons of doing it and what happens if you do that. Okay. Um, so they know I've asked them multiple times. I'll, have, I'll remind them again. And maybe did you reach out to Merrimack? To I, the, I haven't. I don't know. That them. might be a good idea, yeah. too, to just get even some information or because I think they came out a couple of times years ago. There yeah. was someone doing, I guess, maybe water quality. Yeah. And yeah. They were doing like studies and you know, the oil, nitrogen content, phosphorus, from my memory. Right. You know, so they it was were doing a while a lot ago. Of that. Yeah. And they were monitored, monitoring us on an annual, at least an annual basis. Right. 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 Um, yeah. Anyways, so that's um, it's, and that's supposed to be tied into the ARPA funds, right? That's where that came from. I don't remember where we we d we did give a modest amount, right, to be able to get that underway. Yeah, well, the weeds, but I mean, I think when that was brought up in discussion about potentially dredging the pond, we we talked yes. about that being connected with the other funds that we might be getting. So, point. so that may be a potential use. Uh, again, we've sort of held on making any determinations relative to the other funds right. as we've gone to the wastewater planning. Right. Um, but that, that I, th I believe it would be an elderly. Yeah, I'm sorry. I believe it would be an eligible use in one of the categories yeah. somehow. Yeah, sounds like it, yeah. You mean whatever can be helpful in that area? Because that really is like Ipswich River Park. It's really something yeah. that we should really it's a precious, care for. It's yes. a precious resource yeah. for us. Yeah, for and sure. it'd be nice to clean it up. All mm. right, thank you. Mrs. Yeah. Gonzalez, anything? Um, when I was at the community planning meeting, um, Bruce Wheeler was there. Um, just kind of making some little changes, but um, saying that he would be going forward very soon to submit, and that would get rolling. So I was just happy to see that going. That's good. Okay. That's good. Just, can I go back for a second? Mr. Walner? Sorry, yeah, I'm just on the tax committee stuff, so I'm gonna be working with Michael on um, how we're gonna get that word out through the various departments that it's gonna be affected by. So it's just really, it's just a question of how are we going to modify our website to make it easier for people to understand it and to get the word out in a clear way? But I think we have the information. Um, it's just it's a marketing effort, and it's going to different departments to get them to make modifications. Is it about the abatements and the program it's for seniors? It's the entire seniors? program. So if yeah. you go to like the Lexington one, they have one document that that um, describes every program they have to help people stay in their home. We'll be following a very similar pattern. Okay. So. But if it's, it's really coming down to the website, you know, how can we modify that and, you know, make it useful, more useful, and having a hard copy document as well. So, mm -hmm. 
Excuse me, Liam, if I cut you off, I just want to add them. Mr. Strudel, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, that's it. Let's adjourn. <laughs> Do we have a motion? Is that it? Okay. Yep. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, no worries. <laughs> 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 Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. Second. second motion by Mr. Wallace, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.